Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. And uh, we're getting ready to go into our next segment with Dr. Deb Jones. Again, her uh, brand new book, Cooperative Care, uh, Seven Steps to Stress-Free hu Husbandry. Uh, and she's going to be uh, taking through us some applications relative to husbandry. Um, so we're really excited. Uh, uh, Deb is a longtime uh, friend of ours. Uh, she's uh, specialized in, in social and behavioral psychology. Uh, she's re just recently retired 20 years teaching psychology class at, uh, at Kent State University. Um, and she, uh, you may know her from the uh, Finzi Academy, she does, Finzi Institute. She does a lot uh, uh, in, in that world, a lot of virtual training sessions. Uh, she's been a trainer for uh, uh, 25 years, working with a, a large range of dog breeds and a number of other species as well. Uh, so I, I think you're gonna really enjoy what she has to say. Um, she's just a great overall uh, source of knowledge in the training world and uh, we're going to have these books available um, and we'll be giving those away as prizes throughout the day as well mm -hmm. uh, so with no further ado if you guys um, uh, if we're ready to cut over to Deb I guess oh. Deb take it away here's Deb <laughs> okay hi everybody um, can you guys hear me and see me um, uh, I can't hear her, but uh, okay. so that's because my ah. thing can't. We can hear you, Deb. Okay, just want to make sure before I say anything vitally important. <laughs> <laughs> that, not that I have any idea what that might be, but you never know. I could accidentally say something important, and uh, I want to make sure people can hear it. So, hi, Wes. Hi, Amanda. Thank hi, you. Hi, Deb. Thank you guys so much for, for asking me to be here. I, um, as you know, I'm a big fan of the Pet Tutor and I use it in a lot of my training. So I have um, plenty of stuff to show you and you can probably see my little help, one of my helpers here in the background. Um, this is Pixel and he's very, very ready to um, do whatever is necessary. I set, let me turn, turn just a touch. Here's my setup. Um, for training right now. Yeah, that looks good. So I got, I've got my little shorty, which is my favorite thing for Pet Tutor. Um, I don't know why, but I'm just <laughs> fascinated by the shorty so much better. It's, and I realize it's the same exact thing, <laughs> just a slightly smaller version, but I've got my shorty set up. I've got my clicker here. And so I moved everything into the dining and you can see star waiting for her turn as well hopefully um yeah. i moved everything into the dining room to set it up today and he's been on this table ever since um because the pet tutor is here and so he's um definitely learned the lesson that i want them to learn which is that good stuff happens to you when this comes out i mean to me that's like my um number one training lesson is that it's it's always a good thing okay so I guess I'll just talk a little bit about what I'm doing with my pet tutor, especially in terms of cooperative care training. If people have questions and want to ask them, that would be great. Um, but somebody will have to, I guess I can pull up the chat here as well, but then and see the questions if they come in. Yeah, um, um, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll relay the questions to you. Okay. Uh, so uh, Nick's going to be watching those and then uh, he'll give that to me and, uh, and I'll read the question to you. Okay, so hopefully as we go along, people will have questions. Right, so you don't have to do two things at once. <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. I have trouble doing one thing at once. Yeah, these me days, too. So. Geez, some days it's harder than others. Um, so, okay, let me let me just give you a little bit of black uh, background on um, my use of the pet tutor and on cooperative care and on how I put them together and um, go from there and then I can show you some demo things especially if people want to see anything that's a good thing to ask now if I can show it I will um, so I got a pet tutor gosh I, I'm thinking four or five years ago I'm not sure even how long you guys have been around now it seems like forever yeah. <laughs> so I can't say for sure but I know that I was very interested in it and the reason that I was so interested is because when I was an undergraduate, I used to um, run the rat lab in the psychology department that I was at, and we had Skinner boxes. So we had a bank of probably 25 or 30 Skinner boxes that we used, and we used them a lot in our um, experiments that we did and in the work we did in training rats um, to do a bunch of different behaviors. 
So I always sort of liked that little mechanical aspect to training where you could provide reinforcers um, in a number of different ways, and especially that you could provide them while you were at a distance, while you were a little bit more remote from the subject that you were training. So I, I got one and started using it, had a lot of fun with it in a variety of ways. And I still do a number of different things with my pet tutor, um, but mostly here today, I'm gonna to talk about um, cooperative care. And let me first define that a little bit. So cooperative care would be anything you do in terms of training your dog um, to tolerate um, any sort of veterinary procedure and also any sort of grooming procedure. So those two areas in particular, the vet and the groomer, and, area, and those are places where lots of dogs and cats <laughs> are very, very unhappy. And so I've done it with my cat as well. He's not around at the moment, but he might be when he hears Pet Tutor because it wouldn't surprise me. He's often here when he hears it. Um, so um, cooperative care for these animals means that they're involved in the process. And I've I'm teaching them often long before they need it. I'm teaching them um, different behaviors and I'm also conditioning them that these things happening to you are good. And so good things are going to happen when, um, when we have to do these procedures. And I use my, as I say, I use my pet tutor a lot um, because it, may, it just makes life a lot easier. I like having something a little remote from me. Um, oh, Zen is gonna come up and say hi as well because he's been ignored so far for the last five minutes. Um, um, and, and Zen gets to do whatever he wants because he's the old dog. So. Oh yeah, we have a, a couple of questions, Deb. Okay, sure. Um, uh, so do you keep the pet tutor hidden when it's not in use because uh, you built up the positive association with it? Hold on a second. I knew that at some point um, people would deliver a package and then we have the wildness. So give me a second. Sure. Star. Star. Hey, Star, come here. Oh, there you are, good girl. If I can get the worst offender. Mom, mom, red alert, red alert, there's a package. <laughs> yeah, there's a package, I got it. That happens like 10 times a day. So it's not like an unusual, here we go. Come here, come here. Good, thank you very much for coming here. He says yeah, yes. So it's, uh, do you keep it hidden? Oh yeah, do I keep it hidden? I usually do put it away um, when I'm not using it. Because if I don't, they will, they will gravitate to it and they will obsess on it. Zenny, come here. In the hopes that they might be able to get me to start a training session. Zenny, come here, come here. Zen, come. That's the good boy. Come on up, good, okay. I think we're back for a minute here, back to normal. So yes, I do put it away, I do bring it out then. And when I bring it out, they know that that means that something is happening here. I'm going to be actively doing something with them. And so um, that's, it, it's a nice conditioned emotional response to the device. They're happy to see it, not only because it means food, you know, which is great for everybody. We all love things that mean food, but also because it means they're going to get to do something. And my dogs really like to do something um, because they get bored very, very easily. Okay. So that's the that's long good. answer. Yeah, we had, a, no, we had another question. Uh, somebody that knows you, I guess. Uh, hi, okay. uh, Hurricane and Rachel are watching and uh, okay. We have a pet tutor, and Hurricane is wondering if we can have it uh, for when mom is doing his Manny Petty. Oh, yes. They're in class with me right now. Um, I'm teaching a class on, I'm teaching your dog to let you do their nails. So um, I've, I'm in the mid middle of that course. And yes, maybe for Hurricane. <laughs> Probably, but we have to introduce it first. Hurricane is a Malinois who is very very energetic and touchy about things. So I'd say, yes, we can use it. Um, yes, we can introduce it, but I would wanna, wanna walk her through some of those steps just to be sure we do it right from the start. Okay. Um, okay. And okay. that is one of the things that I talk to people about when we use Pet Tutor is that I go through a whole stage of introducing it to the dogs first. 
um, because I see two things that sometimes happen. Um, one is um, you have dogs that might be afraid of the something to do with it, like the light or the sound. It's not usually, but occasionally you run into dogs who are sensitized to things. Um, and the other thing, the bigger problem I see with dogs I work with is they see it as a giant puzzle toy. Yeah. And so if they can find a way to knock it around and make the food come out, that's what they want to do. And because we've taught a lot of our dogs to interact with objects and to do food puzzles of many different kinds. So I don't want my dogs thinking that that's what they should do with it. <laughs> And so I start with it up on a high table. Um, let me turn this a little bit. I have a high grooming table here. And I start with it up on the high table so that they can't reach it at first. And I turn it so that the treats drop out in chase mode there so it, that they're not in the bowl. Um, and they drop onto the ground. Okay. So I want to teach a dog, you don't actually have to interact with it in order for it to feed you. Okay. That's, that's I, a great point, Deb. And uh, uh, for those, we do have a blog site and, and Deb has done a couple of awesome blogs for us with videos. So what she just described is available in, in one of her blogs on our uh, the Pet Tutor blog site of how to introduce. I think that's critical. Some dogs, you can just jump right into using the Pet yeah. Tutor, but you really uh, have to think about, is your dog uh, shy or overly assertive let's put <laughs> yeah. it that way and exactly you have to think about how you introduce something new to dogs on either end of that spectrum so you yeah, do a great yeah. job then oh thanks i just like to always mention that to people because i don't want them to jump in and then to, and cause a problem that they didn't have to have yep <laughs> because we want this to be such a good experience but it's not a good experience if the dog's trying to knock it around and we're trying to get them to stop then we have a whole other training issue so i do go through that stage where i'm going to introduce the machine um the device before i do anything with it um, and so back to Rachel and Hurricane. So I'd want to talk to you about all of that before we introduced it um, into training, very similar to the way we work with a Zen bowl um, with our dogs. So once they've learned that, the first thing that, I'm, that I teach them is that the place where I'm going to do all of this work, um, all of the husbandry type work and the cooperative care work, that that place is an excellent place to be. You want to be there. Um, and so let me, let me turn it, let me turn mine my, my on here. All right. Oh, they heard that. <laughs> okay. So what I do, Pixel's uh, going to be the volunteer here as tribute for this one. Mm -hmm. right. So what I do is I simply feed them and I have my little clicker here, which I love my little clicker. Okay. All they have to do is be here and I feed them with the feeder. So being on this table th that I have set up for um, grooming and husbandry procedures, I will do sessions where that's all we do, is you get on the table. Um, I release treats about 10 times. Oh, Star heard it. She was slow to react, <laughs> but she's, uh, she's here now as well. Okay, Pixel. Come here, Star. You wanna come up? There we go, okay. Um, so, that that's my first step is just to get them to want to be here because if i have to fight with you to get you to be here then everything we do after that is sort of poisoned so we want it to be nice and pleasant and interesting um to be here okay so let, hang on here a sec let me uh move Victor, can you go for a second go on okay so star okay. oh pixel go okay go 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 that's the hardest part is getting just one. Okay. And Star loves this thing to no end. Yeah, and you can see the look on her face. She's like, yeah, and the, and the wagging tail. So I'm always looking for all those signs in my dogs when I work with them. Oh, thank you. I want to see, <laughs> she's like, do you want to do my nails? I've got nails. Um, I want to see that they want to be here. That's not a real thing. Tigger is just starting trouble. <laughs> Okay. So I do a lot of just, um, I wouldn't even call it reinforcing. I'm really conditioning the dogs to want to be in this place. Okay, Zen, it's fine. Um, and by conditioning, come here, Zenny. Come here. He gets started as an old dog and he doesn't stop. Come here, Zen. Come on. Good boy. Um, by conditioning, what I mean is um, I'm trying to change that internal emotional response or build um, an internal emotional response that is very positive. 
something. And that's different um, than reinforcing a behavior. I'm talking about a whole different kind of learning that I focus on in my early stages with um, cooperative care work where I want to build these associations that all these things are good. Um, being on this table is good. Me taking your foot is good. Okay? It's a thing that always ends up turning out well for you. So just, um, and I want to build these emotional connections. The problem with emotional connections is we can't see them. <laughs> and because we can't really see them directly, we can see them indirectly um, in their body language, but we can't really see them directly and that makes it harder to work with. So I'm trying to work with something that's internal and a little bit invisible. Um, and that is where we talk a lot about paying attention to your dog's body language, knowing what's normal for them, knowing what seems to, um, indicate any sort of discomfort or anxiety or tension in them and paying close attention to that, that we don't wanna push until we see signs of discomfort. Or if we do see them, we very, very quickly want to adjust what we're doing and make it easier. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the approach, which is a little different or a lot different actually from, I want you to do this thing and I will pay you for it. It's I'm trying to um, get you to feel a certain way about things. And what I want you to feel is comfortable and relaxed about the things that I'm going to have to do to you for our cooperative care work. I want you to at the very least tolerate it, um, <clears throat> but many times we can do even better. Now, sometimes tolerance is enough. Okay? Sometimes we have a dog that there's something they just truly dislike a lot. And if we can get to tolerance, that's a big plus, and I'll take it. If they'll just let me do this thing, I'd be happy with it. Okay. Um, but other times we can get to the point, starts trying to stick her tongue up into the pet tutor here. <laughs> she does that. She's like, maybe I can make something fall out. And I have a feeling it's been, it's worked once or twice. Yeah. Um, so it's sort of a, a superstitious behavior. Um, and she will get her face right up in there um, as soon as she hears it. Because this is, again, this is a good thing for her. Um, you can see that she's maintaining focus on it for a long, long period of time, which works great because then I can work on doing things to her. And she's a little bit distracted and she's in a pretty good mood about the whole thing too. So it makes my job easier by having something here that she can use as a focal point, a very positive focal point. Yeah, that, Deb, that's a, a, a great point is that sometimes uh, folks will say, well, my dog really focuses on the pet tutor and they look at that as a negative. Mm. So I think, you know, it, it is again, just a tool. So it depends on how you use the tool. Um, in some cases, uh, having that magnetic draw can be an advantage. Yes, it can be. And, and it's true that sometimes it can be problematic. Um, if you get sort of too much obsessive focus on it, especially if I want them to be doing something else. But in this case, I, the only thing I am concerned about here, because I do like to give my dogs this external focus point while I'm going to be doing things to them. Oh, did I hear you growling at Nick's soul? Come here, Nick's. Um, so I want to make sure that actually that the only reason they're staying isn't because of this, that they're actually comfortable as well. Because dogs who are uncomfortable will, put, will continue to work if the payoff's big enough, but I don't wanna push them to that. I don't want them to continue to do it when they're really uncomfortable under the surface. So I wanna be very careful that while I like a focus on it, I don't want it to become too extreme because that yeah. hurts. Yeah, now, kind of down. along that line, someone was asking, well, what about dogs that guard the feeder? I was, I was just thinking that when you heard Star growl a little bit here and I moved Pixel away. Um, <laughs> that can be problematic if you have multiple dogs. Okay? Um, it can also be problematic if you have a dog that guards against humans. Now, if dogs just are guarding from other dogs, I just, I just uh, manage that problem. Yeah. And usually that's fine. It's usually pretty minimal. In fact, that's the first time I've ever heard that come out of her. Just um, keep so, the dogs apart. Yep. 
Yeah, so I'll keep an eye on that. But keeping the, keeping just one dog at a time is is one way to do it. Now, if the dog is resource guarding from humans, that and that becomes a problem. You you really need some in person help or at least some dedicated help with that, because it can be dangerous. And um, that's not something I would be comfortable saying. Oh, you just do this and, and solve that problem, because resource guarding can be a pro can be a serious problem. Um, if you don't address it, and if you don't address it appropriately. Yeah, you, you've yeah. got a bigger problem than grooming if that's starting yes. to happen. So that's and I would, a, yes, turn and I would go to that. For help. Yes, I would definitely go to that first, and I would deal with that as a problem. And I have seen um, cases of it now and again when I've seen student videos where the dog um, freezes and starts to give mm -hmm. them some sort of eye, which scares me to no end. So I uh, immediately say, stop doing whatever that was. Okay? Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen a lot of it with the pet tutor, honestly. Um, I've seen a little bit with other dogs, but I have never have not seen it with humans. So um, luck, we're lucky it's, it's pretty much a, a limited problem, I think. Okay. Hey, Star, lie down. To give her something to do since she's being. <laughs> <laughs> since she's being good over there. Okay, so uh, let's see, where was I gonna go with this? So I do a lot, as I said, first step is um, take this place where I'm gonna do all this work and make it the best place in the world for my dogs to be. And they don't have to do anything but be there. Just being there is enough. Then I'm going to move into um, where I'm gonna start doing things to you. I'm going to start touching you. I'm going to introduce some tools to you that we're going to be commonly using as we go through this process. Okay. So let me um, switch you guys around here again. Star off. Go. Star go. Go. Go on. No, you off too. One dog at a time. Not you. Not you. This dog. Thank you. <laughs> me, me. One dog at a time. Okay, Pixel. It's Pixel's turn here. There we go. So I would start just something as simple as touch, cookie, touch, cookie. Okay. So the thing I'm going to do comes first, and then the cookie comes. Okay. So what happens here is that my touch becomes a predictor that a cookie is going to be loose from the pet tutor. Okay. So it's a really simple, everything I've been talking about here so far is really classical conditioning, which means that this predicts that. And so you should come to like the fact that I'm touching you because it always means that there's a good outcome for you coming pretty quickly. So it's consistent over time. Now Pixel doesn't have any problem being touched, um, which is good. Um, but if a dog does, then we have to work within their limits um, of how comfortable they are with the touch. And it may end up being just showing them my hand and releasing the cookie. Guess who's not getting any dinner tonight, Pixel? <laughs> Showing you my hand. And sometimes we have to go back that far because a dog is so uncomfortable um, with being touched or they've had bad experiences where they've been forced into doing things that they weren't comfortable with. Luckily, I don't have that with Pixel. So I can do all kinds of touch. And in fact, I can even do a little bit of restraint and then reinforce there. So he's learning. Okay, that's not comfortable. That's not the most pleasant thing he, that anybody's ever done to him, is to sort of grab him and squeeze him a little bit. But it's always followed by something good. So it's also not the worst thing that ever happened because again, it predicts something good occurring here. So that's my general approach. Come here, Pix, you come off. Hey, Star, you wanna come back up? She says, yes, I do. Uh, no, 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 you stay off now. Okay. So that's my general approach to touching, and I do the same thing then with um, tools. Okay. Uh, and probably the biggest issue is with some way to do a dog's nails. So I use my Dremel a lot. I like my Dremel. I probably shouldn't be advertising. I like my nail grinder. Let me make it vague. <laughs> I like to use that too. And so I can do pretty much the same thing here. I'm going to show her the tool and then release it quickly. And if I can do this over and over and over again okay, um, and get closer and closer over time as she's comfortable, <laughs> 
And so this way, I'm getting her, again, showing her this comes out, something good happens for you. That's what we want. She's like, I'm seeing it. That's what we want to see. I want to see her response to that. And you can see she's trying to give me her feet because she's, she knows the connection between these two things. Um, if your dog doesn't, though, you start, again, where your dog is comfortable. I have students who tell me I get out the grinder. They get out the grinder and the dog runs away. Okay, so we're going to have to go way, way back in the process to the point where the dog can at least see the, see the tool um, in or and stay in the same room. And so we have to work through those things sometimes. Um, but STARS now got this excellent association between seeing the nail grinder and getting reinforced. And in fact, she would like very much if I would do her feet <laughs> because that means we get even more food out of here. So that's my approach with every tool. I just use the nail grinder because that's the first thing I grabbed over here. Um, but it could be anything. It could be scissors. Right? Um, it could be the brush. Whatever the object is, and we go through a lot of them. Pixel, you're not supposed to be up here yet. Um, I can do each one separately, but it usually goes pretty quickly. Once my dog understands that tools coming out are good things because they predict that I'm going to release something from the pet tutor. Um, they're happy. Now, hang on one second. I'm going to grab something back here. Speaking of tools, <laughs> little yeah, um, trick of There's another question. Do you want to take a question at this point? Yeah, let's do that, and then I'll show you what I was going to do here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, someone uh, is asking, uh, do you, uh, uh, how do you combine the pet tutor with a consent positions, for example, chin rest, or is that really not feasible? And uh, do you consider a uh, focus on the pet tutor consent, similar to Shirak Patel's bucket game? And I, I love uh, Shirak Patel. He's an amazing trainer. And I'm yes. sure you're familiar with the bucket game. Yes, yes. Um, and yes, it's very, very similar. Um, so the idea, um, I don't want to put words in, in Chirac's mouth <laughs> about this, but the general idea of the bucket game is what I tend to use also for the Zen bowl that I use sometimes, as well as the pet tutor, which is as long as you're comfortable focusing on this, I will continue what I'm doing. But if you can no longer focus on that, because you're often busy looking to see what I'm doing, I'll stop. So looking at the device indicates comfort and consent. Mm -hmm. Looking away from it indicates I'm not, I'm not comfortable anymore and I'm not certain I want you to keep doing whatever you're doing. So then we would stop. So yeah, you can use that focus and change of focus um, as a way, as a communication from your dog. So my dog's telling me that they can or cannot focus by whether they're looking at the machine or the device or whether they're starting to look more at what I'm doing. And yeah, I can use it like that and I do use it like that pretty regularly. Now, of course, dogs can look around. Just because you look away for a second doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem. But especially if I get a really sharp head turn away from it in my direction, now I'm concerned that my dog is becoming uncomfortable and I need to, I need to back off and do something about that. Um, one of the things that I'm telling people often in my classes is we don't just offer the cookie after we do something to them, after they let us do something to them. We also give them cookies because they're communicating with us. So mm -hmm. if you're telling me you're uncomfortable, I'm going to give you a cookie for that. And, and as a way of saying, thank you for telling me you're not comfortable. And then I will stop doing that at that level. I'm not going to completely stop forever because then we'd never make any progress. But I'll stop doing that right now at that level because it looks like it's too much for you. It looks like it's making you uncomfortable. But I won't withhold cookies because mm -hmm. I don't want to discourage communication. Mm -hmm. And I don't want my dog to do something because they want the cookie so badly, even though they're uncomfortable with it. I hope that makes sense. Well, it's, it's a beautiful nuance. I've, I've never thought about it that deeply. Uh, okay, thank you. good. Yeah. I was hoping as I'm going through it, I'm hoping it makes sense because I see it a lot. And I want to say to the dogs, thank you for telling me that this is too much. I don't want to say, oh, well, if you don't like it, then you don't get any cookies. 
I want to be able to have this back and forth communication. So you told me you didn't like it. I stop, I give you a cookie. And now I need to rethink, what can I do to make this more comfortable for you? What do I have to, how far back do I have to go in the process so that we can make this a little bit easier? Yeah, okay. yeah. The, the, the questioner said, thank you, Deb. I appreciate oh. the detailed response. Okay, good. <laughs> I get a little too detailed sometimes. Okay, so let me show you um, one of the things that I wanted to, to, to show you here, which I think is fun. Okay. Pixel off. Off. I've got three dogs crowding around here trying to get, oh, and Pixel does not listen. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to show you, I have this little doctor kit that I bought on Amazon, and it's got all kinds of little play doctor stuff in it. They also sell veterinarian kits, play veterinarian kits. Um, and so you can buy, this one has a ton of things in it, this particular play doctor kit. And I use it all the time. Um, it gives me things like a blood pressure cuff, right, which is obviously not going to work, and a scalpel, which I like, and here's a needle for injections, so, and scissors. Okay. So before I do real tools, a lot of times, I will play around with all of this stuff, okay, and stethoscope, so we know that, you know, we can listen to heartbeats and do all those kinds of things. What I like about this is there's a lot of different shapes and sizes of stuff, tweezers. Um, um, and I can get my dog used to all kinds of strange objects moving towards you and touching you without using the actual tools yet. Okay, so I can get them used to, for example, let's see here, I don't need a little cell phone for any particular reason. Apparently if you play doctor, you need a cell phone. Um, let me see here, I can get them, this would be something that you would use, I'm guessing, to look in their mouth. But I could also pretend it's something that I look in their eyes with, and I could do this. Good. And then I can reinforce for that. So the only thing Star is doing, or the, and it's an important thing, is she's holding still and letting me do this to her. That's a really important thing. I'm not asking her to do anything, I'm asking her to let me do the things. Oh, she got a freebie, and they love that when that happens. <laughs> um, so that is, to me, very important. Now you've seen that she's offering me her feet a lot, um, because she does kind of understand that's usually what happens when we get up here with the pet, pet tutors, you're going to do my nails. Um, but I'm not asking necessarily for that. What I really want to do, when I get to that point, is be able to take her feet and her let me do that. So I'm paying my dogs well for allowing me to do things to them um, and for them <laughs> being fairly passive about it and letting that happen. And all of these tools, oh, here we go. This is really what I was looking for, the look in your eyes. All of these tools, good, okay. Um, simply allow me to simulate some of the things that are gonna happen at the vet in particular. Um, or some things that might be done when we're grooming them, like with scissors. I can um, mess, play around with these without actually having any possibility of cutting my dog, which is important, so I can get them used to the sound. Good. Okay. And again, all she has to do is let me do these weird things. Okay. So I really like um, getting a doctor kit of some sort or a veterinarian kit of some sort and playing with all the different devices that um, and tools that come along with it, because you can do a lot with this. And you can get your dog, your dog doesn't know the difference between a play thing and the real thing. Okay? So once you've played around with this enough, I imagine if I could understand what my dogs are thinking, I don't know. But what I imagine is that they're thinking, oh, it's another one of those weird things that you do to me. <laughs> and they always pay off really well. Um, I don't know why you do these weird things to me. <laughs> they don't have any conception of that. But what they do know is stuff coming at them, that's not scary. That always works out. That always turns out great in the end. So the fact that, you know, my vet is coming in and going to give a big shot, you know, and I practice that too, it's like, okay, and I bet you I'll get paid off for it.
So the more we can do things like this, the better. And if you don't want to buy, if people don't want to buy a kit, I like to buy stuff like this because I think it's cool. And obviously I need more deliveries in my life. Um, but if you don't want to buy the kit, um, you can find a number of things around the house that'll stand in for all of this stuff. I just had a student or someone who was making some videos for me um, for some of these procedures. And she didn't have the, uh, where'd go, the otoscope to look in the eyes. She didn't have something like this. Um, and so she took a clear syringe and was just looking through that into her dog's eye um, because that was something she had. Somebody else was using a remote control device or even your phone and pretend you're looking in your dog's eye. The idea is something comes close to their face and then we're kind of staring at it and holding it still. So any of those things or any things you can come up with around your house, all good stuff to get your dog used to. If the only time they see some tool approach them is when something painful then happens, and they're going to like that less and less over time. So the more we can make all of this stuff just, again, kind of fun. They wanna be the dog up here doing this, very much so, because the dog up here doing this is also the one that gets all the goodies. And so they've learned over many, many, many repetitions that it's good to jump up on a table like they will at a vet. And it's also very good when these things, these different tools come out, because that means, again, something really good is likely to happen to you. Do you ever take the pet tutor to the veterinarian with you? I have not. And I was just thinking about that when I was talking. And I'm like, I have not but I can see the value in doing that um, because then you really are pretty much replicating the training scenario here. And I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't love that to no end. Um, <laughs> I usually already do, like I have a rug on the table, I take the rug and yes, use that rug same. on the vet's table because that's familiar. They know, oh yeah, we get up on these things and we're elevated and then this stuff happens. Um, so I usually take the rug, but I, I could see taking this, especially now that we have the travel one. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I do see. use mine at the, at the vet, um, but I've only used it for the part where we're waiting because ah. so many times the door is opening and closing and all different kinds of strangers are going in and out of the room. And there's this, uh, well, who's that? What's that? Who's that? Where are they going? Are they coming? And so that's kind of, I use it in that interim part. Yes, that's a good idea. I feel that way at the doctor's office myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it now? Is it this it? Is this going to fill this thing with chocolate and take it for me? I think mm -hmm. that might be <laughs> really helpful. Okay. So um yeah, I think that would be a good idea and I haven't done I haven't done that cuz of course right now we can't even go into the vet's office at least around here. Um Right. They are still, my vet is still doing, they come to the car and take your dog and take them in kind of thing. But when we can go back in again, I could definitely see that as being a really, really good approach. Okay, so um, another thing I wanted to mention here while I'm thinking about it is um, something that I have taught and added in um, in the early part of my whole training process, and many of you who know me know that I love chin rest. I think the chin rest is the greatest thing that we ever thought of to do with the dog, which is simply this, that I can steady your muzzle okay, in my palm and that you will voluntarily hold it there. So here's a place where the dog is purposely doing something. I want my dog to hold their muzzle here as long as I have my hand here. And Star's like, yeah, I can do that because again, good stuff happens. And I may even at some point at the vets, um, we call this a muzzle wrap. I might use both hands. I might wrap my thumbs around and just kind of really hold and steady my dog, especially if I'm afraid they might be doing something painful that might make my dog snap or want to turn and snap. Mm -hmm. um, wrong button. <laughs> so I might do that. And I use this a ton for not just veterinary procedures. I use it a lot for grooming as well. And I use it in day-to-day -day life. It comes in handy for many, many things. Kind of amazed at how many things a chin rest can come in handy for. So that's something I'd recommend teaching. Again, I can get the duration here. I can, I can work on longer and longer chin rests. 
and then I can even work on them and add a tool. So as I did before, chin rest to steady the head. Now I can look in the eye, okay? Good, okay. and then I can reinforce. So I can start to put together um, some of the things that I'm working on and teaching. And um, at the vets, I have over and over again, I'm, I stand in front, use a chin rest, um, usually reinforcing and my dogs are, are comfortable with that. And um, while the vets are doing their exam and doing other things, um, that might not always be so comfortable for the dogs, but because the chin rest is a familiar thing, um, they tend to be very comfortable with that process. And so that's something I would definitely recommend that. What, what would you think about um, recording the pet tutor beep on your phone and playing it at the vet? Um, well, I, clearly the beep is, is a, a marker. It's a very powerful, positive marker that tells them that treats are coming. You're not supposed to be up here with her. <laughs> I'll make him off a hundred times and he'll jump back on 101 because he's not a quitter. <laughs> come here, Pips. You come here with me for a minute. So I, I, I think um, I really don't even need a marker for most of the training that I do with the pet tutor because it's already built in. The beep is already built into it. And they know that as a very, very good sign. So I could see using it. I could see using it again um, to carry over those good feelings that they've developed about it into um, the veterinary setting. I, I think that that would be an interesting approach to, to a marker for that. Um, though, the only, the only downside I see is I'm often juggling so many things already. <laughs> that yeah. It's another thing to juggle because I'm taking my treats and I've got my mat and I've got all my stuff going on. Um, so it might be a little harder um, to juggle that as well. But now if I'm thinking about just taking the whole thing with me, yeah. um, the, next, the next, and I am really seriously thinking about that for my next few visits because that can only help. That can only be a good thing in that setting for them to go, oh, this happens here too, huh? This couldn't be so bad if this happens here too. Yeah, maybe even groomers too. If, uh, groomers yes, well. yeah, know. yeah. And I talk about vet a lot, but groomer as well. Um, and I can see where this would be so valuable for grooming um, because you can be busy working behind the dog or off to the side somewhere um, and you can still, re you can encourage them to be facing the device and you can still um, reinforce them very, very easily. Okay. Um, now I know I'm, I'm using my little clicker today and I love my little clicker. I just have this great love for the clicker thing, probably because <laughs> I trained with a clicker for so, so many years. Um, but um, I know you can also put it on tilt mode. Yes. Yes. Yep. And so you, and I've tried, I had actually worked on that with, I think my very first pet tutor. Did it have some way you could yep, actually put all, the remote? They've all had the tilt mode. Yes. Okay. Because I think I could put the remote into one of those wobbly Kong thingies. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was trying to hit that with my foot when I was had both hands occupied. Um, I'm not, I was not real coordinated with that entire process. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have a feeling that with some practice, um, as with anything, it would get easier. And so it would be possible if you had it on tilt mode that you could be releasing the treats while you were using both hands to groom the dog or to do any procedure on the yeah, dog. Yeah, I think it was Ken McCord. I don't know if he's still on. He was on earlier this morning as participant. Uh, he, uh, he had mentioned that uh, uh, he put it on his foot, trimming the, the hoof on a horse so he could be behind uh -huh. the horse and dispense carrots in front he's got this you know both hands he's got a hoof and a, a trimmer right and so he yeah. just his foot i don't know if i'm yeah. that coordinated but if you could could do all that exactly exactly i can see my i can see myself doing all the wrong things but it's <laughs> i think it's possible that people uh, can do that in type and you tap your foot that might be a lot of treats <laughs> right and am i imagining things um or was there a point at which you could you could use your voice to release the first um, yeah all, you, all um, the first one that was built into the remote now you could do that from the app uh, but okay. you probably it would work best if you had like uh, headsets or something with a mic on it so uh, okay. voice up. but that would I, be I possible think, today yeah I think I did remember doing that and that I thought was helpful too that you could release with your voice um, 
and and not have to again have the extra hand. It's always like if I just had the extra hand, <laughs> it would all be so much easier. Yeah. Um, so I think his, his face ahead. is cracking me up because yeah. you're talking and it's adorable. But yeah. back I, on the table, is yeah. Star, is, it's not star. It's uh, that's it. star. That's uh, the star, stars on the table. Yeah, because star. Then, yeah, Zen is down here. Expression yeah. while you're talking is so intense. Like yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, yes, it's like, come on, do yeah. something with us, <laughs> quit just talking randomly to your computer. <laughs> and this is also life with border collies in general, though. All right. <laughs> now, Star's really good. She'll just go do whatever and lay down. Zen, on the other hand, over here, yeah. he's the one who would sit and stare at you for 10 hours just in case maybe you were going to do just something. Just in case, just in case. Yeah, you wow. never know. It, this is really gone. I, I, I don't, uh, man, I'm learning so much. I don't want to stop. Uh, I just got the, uh, the signal. We've got about three minutes left. Wow, it's, in that is really, it's in the book. It's all in the book. It yes, is. The yeah, book. I, even brought the, I even got a copy of the book out. So I can show <laughs> Good. It. But, um, then I realized the book says not for resale on it. I guess this was my, my draft copy at some point in time. <laughs> you, you're um, allowed to sell your own book. <laughs> um, that's what I was wondering. It's like, why does it say not for resale? <laughs> but yes, the book, um, and I know you guys have, a, have some uh, copies of it now too. Mm -hmm. That, oh, and it's, yeah, we've got that up on the screen now. From so Amazon, yeah, 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 I have it. The screen, it's published uh, through Amazon, so they publish on demand, meaning that when you order it, then they print it. Yeah, um, they've got a Kindle it. version too. That's how I bought it first. Is on my right. Kindle. Yeah, I just did that. Um, I had it out for about a year before I did the Kindle version of it, just because I wanted to. I'd never gone through Amazon publishing before, and I wanted to make sure. Um, that everything worked. And it's actually the easiest publishing I've done in 20 some years um, mm. is to publish something yourself on Amazon. I would never go back now. I've worked with a <laughs> lot of publishers, some good, some not so good. Um, and it's like, no, I like, I like being able to do it mainly myself and have control of the process um, as we go through. So, but yeah. the book, I, I, I like, of course, because I wrote it, um, but I, I think people like it because it's very clear steps. And at the yes. end of each step, there's a checklist. Did you do, you know, can you do all these things? If you can, okay, move on. And I think that helps a lot um, for people who are like me, which is I like checklists. I'm very left brain, one thing after the other oriented in terms of, of how I learn and how I think. Um, and so mo many people seem to like that approach to it, that you really can follow the steps and you can really see great progress. Star yeah, it's different. full of great pictures too, which is so helpful when you're trying to do something like this. A lot of good photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah a good friend of ours um, took a lot of pictures. We had a, a big photo shoot. Um, and I think at the time we had like maybe six dogs and the cat involved in the photo shoot. So we did a lot of pictures for that. And I'm uh, grateful to have those pictures because I've used them for a lot of years. Um, and they've been very helpful to be able to just see the different parts of the process um, rather than just trying to describe them in words. Um, it's one thing to see it in a easier sometimes to see it in a picture or to, to see a video or watch somebody do it. Um, for many, of, many people who are more visually oriented, um, but having both, I, I like to do whenever possible because I think it's helpful to see it as well as get the text so you can go back and read it and read over it if you need to. Yeah. More than yeah thanks. Yeah. Wow. This just went so quick. I can't believe it. Uh, <laughs> great. Says, great. Yeah. And I didn't get yeah. enough cookies yet. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of time. You know, there's a lot of stuff about grooming that could be talked about and, and oh, a lot more, yeah. uh, you know, but again, a lot of that's covered in the book. Uh, do you have any courses that you've uh, put together or anything in the works? Yeah. Oh yeah, I almost totally forgot about that. <laughs> well, I do teach courses, as you mentioned, at Fenzie Dog Sports Academy. I have a cooperative care class. I'm now teaching an all about nails class. Those come around every nine months or so. Um, but I am working on a new project that we hope to have off the ground within a month. And it's called a cooperative care certificate. Mm. Um, it'll have its own website, which we're finishing up. And I believe that um, one of I believe that the name's going to be cooperative care certificate. That we've bought all possible permutations of that. <laughs> 
so that no matter what you put in, because I even I can't remember now, maybe it's canine cooperative care. I'm like, so we bought them all. <laughs> They'll be there. And what we're setting up is in this certificate is it's a virtual video titling program. So I have three levels of cooperative care. Okay, those, those three levels, there are 10 exercises in each level. And so basic exercises like the chin rest I showed you, we have um, restraint, we have um, nails and looking at teeth. Pixel's like, oh, this is great. <laughs> um, looking at eyes and ears. So all the different kinds of physical exams that we would do, those are individual exercises. So I have these 10 essential exercises at three levels of difficulty. And so you can get a level one, a level two, or a level three certificate for cooperative care. And I've just finished um, working with a small group of people who were so generous because they videoed, they gave me well over 300 videos um, of the exercises that we could then use in the website and as demonstrations. Um, and so we did a lot of work getting videos together as long as, as, as well as all the, the text. It, um, it's in partnership with Benzie Dog Sports Academy. So they're taking care of all the technical aspects of things that I know nothing about. Um, and I'm doing the, the content and um, dealing with all of that. And where, um, so would that, that, where would people go to find out about that program? Um, well, I know it's not, a, not out yet. Yeah, it's, it's not quite program. out yet. Um, I talk about it on Facebook a lot. So people becoming my Facebook friend is always a good thing. Um, though if you look at Deb Jones on Facebook, I bet you there are a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, my, my profile picture right now is a blue heron. Uh, so maybe that helps a little bit to find me on Facebook. I also have a Facebook group called Cooperative Care with Deb Jones. Ah. And can, anybody can join that. Um, just please answer the screening questions. And if you come on there, then you'll get a lot more information. So Cooperative okay. Care with Deb Jones is my Facebook group um, for that. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And we'll probably post some of that information on our Facebook too, on, on how people can get a hold of you too. So okay, you that that on great. The video, we'll, uh, we'll put something out on our, our book, uh, our Facebook as well. We'll link to that. Uh, well, we've got to wrap up, uh, get ready for All the, right. for the demo coming up later. <laughs> uh, but this was awesome, Deb. Just a oh, thank you guys. I'm presentation. I've enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of what happens today. Yeah, where I can thank sit back you. and relax. <laughs> right. Thanks, you, guys are, you guys are the greatest. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Bye, Bye, -bye. Pixel, Zen, Star. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>